Hello everyone, this is me, Mataz Asawi. First of all, I'd like to congratulate my brother Saul Hair for passing two years on opening a great and awesome EDCINC Academy. I'm your mentor today to talk about new era in modern endodontics, which is 3D thinking, how to think and act in 3D in modern endodontics. We all seeking success and perfection during endodontic treatment. To gain perfection, you have to know the goal of endodontic treatment. The ultimate goal of endodontic treatment is the prevention and or treatment of apical periodontitis, such that there is complete healing and abscess of infection while the overall long-term goal is the placement of a definitive clinically successful restoration and preservation of the tooth. 3D thinking is a new era in modern endodontics which gathers all the steps with new thinking to achieve a successful endodontic treatment, which contains five main categories. First one is seeing, knowledge of anatomy, 3D cleaning, 3D obturation, and final restoration. Seeing. As they said, seeing is believing. You have to see to reach. Reaching what? Reaching every millimeter inside the canal. Magnification is necessary in endodontic treatment for you as a dentist and for your patient as well. 29.5% early retirement because of silent career killer, which is wrong posture. So why? Why to go to your home with back or shoulder pain? Magnification is important to you as a dentist. Improves your posture during practicing dentistry, personal eye protection, better infection control as it maintains a safe space between you and the patient, See what you are doing with a good amount of details, better treatment quality, because seeing bigger, treating better. Your patient can see each one of your steps, not only during endodontic treatment, but also in any type of dental treatment. In this photo, you can't see nothing of George Washington Clothes details, but with magnification, I think you can be a big dealer of fake money. Do we really need magnification in endodontics? Endodontists have frequently boasted that they can do their work blindfolded simply because there is nothing to see. However, the fact that there is a great deal to see inside the canal if we have the perfect tool. Before the introduction of magnification tool, we could feel that there is something wrong inside the canal, ledge, perforation, broken instrument, and the clinical management of that problem was never predictable and depended on happenstance. Now, with the help of microscope, we can deal with such complicated cases and the whole procedure becomes more predictable. 55 years old male patient came to my clinic complaining of pain in the upper left area. Clinical and radiographic examination reveals huge caries beside old mesial restoration. After removing all caries and opening axes, I found a small leakage under the mesial composite restoration as you see, which is the main cause of the inside caries. Therefore, the operating microscope enables the endodontist to assess the marginal integrity of restorations. The operating microscope can also be useful to detect radicular cracks and fracture, avoiding the necessity of exabularity surgery. 42 female patients referred by a colleague with a perforation during scouting distopacal canal. The operating microscope has proven to be indispensable for localization of coronally obstructed canals. Small instruments are used under the magnification to localize the canal orifices. Locating and repairing canal periodontal ligament communications through a delicate and precise intracanal axis can only be accomplished with the aid of enhanced vision and illumination from a high-powered magnification. The biggest advantage in using the microscope is during retreatment. It's just not easy as you imagine, like removing an old garabirka. In fact, 
you will meet a bigger problems than that, such as the removal of screw posts, fiber posts, separating an instrument, silver points, and amalgam pins, which can be done clearly without magnification. You can also use microscope in surgical endodontics, excellent soft tissue management during operation, and routine procedures in cases of open apex. As they said, you must either modify your dream or magnify your skills. Knowledge of anatomy. Working inside anything without knowledge of everything about it is a very big mistake. And of course, you can't go for endodontic treatment without having a clear and excellent knowledge about each tooth anatomy. Dear colleagues, you will find a full description for each tooth anatomy in the first part of this lecture. Today, we will focus on some strange facts about tooth anatomy. 4% of possibility to find two canals in the upper central incisor, upper lateral incisor, and upper canine. 23% for lateral canal and 9% for ramification, apical ramification. Range from 1% to 7.5% of possibility to find three canals in upper first and second premolar. Range from 75% to 83% for two canals. Worldwide analysis of maxillary first molar in B2, second mesiobacal canal prevalence reveals the necessity for searching of MB2. 46% of possibility to find four canals in the upper second molar. 22% of possibility to find two canals in the lower central incisor, lower lateral incisor, and lower canine. Five percent for lateral canals and lower central, lower lateral, and lower canine. 2.5 of possibility to find two canals in the lower first premolar and lower second premolar. Can you imagine? that there is a ranging from 0 to 0.4 percent to find three canals in the lower first and second premolar, range from 1 to 7 percent to find three canals in the mesial root of lower first and second molar, 15 percent for two canals in the distal root of lower first and second molar, range from 5 to 30 percent to find the distal lingual root in the first and the second molar, which is called intermolaris, and range from 0 to 0 0.5 to find the mesiobacal root in the lower first and second molar, which is called radix paramolaris. C-shaped canal are frequent in the lower second molar. As I said before, you can see the all details of knowledge of anatomy in the first part of this lecture. The third category of 3D thinking is 3D cleaning. The root canal is not just a path in one way, it's too complex, and you have to understand that complexity. Understanding complexity will make you aware of the difficulties within the canal. The complexity includes pulp complexity, Bifill, smear layer, dentine debris. Moreover, we all have to know something very important. It has long been established that a root with a tapering canal and a single foramen is the exception rather than the rule. Bulb complexity includes multiple foramina, additional canals, fins, deltas, intracanal connections, C-shaped canals and accessory canals.